have memories. Incredible memories. Memories of the good old days with my partners. Fifteen good years. Mary Wilson. Florence Ballard. Cindy Birdsong. Never think baby love would still be around after 15 years. I guess we was really something. many people saying this book girl we can't wait till you dish you know I know you hate Diana Ross and I know this and I know this and I said you know this book is about Cinderella's and we lived a real Cinderella story and the book hopefully will be uplifting when people read it I hope they will come away being happy because it's supposed to be happy I wrote it out of happiness uh, unfortunately I had to talk about a few situations that were not happy but overall I think in anyone's life you have your ups and you have your downs I interviewed Diana Ross some time ago and she talked about that time when she was thrust forward and the rest of the girls in the group were pushed back almost as background singers how did that make you feel well that was that was definitely uh, the biggest problem um, within the group but um, to be real honest about it, from the very beginning that, that existed, uh, from the moment that it was decided by Barry that Diane would take over all leads and that Florence and I would no longer sing lead, um, that problem was there. But, you know, we sort of agreed because we wanted to be, we wanted to have a hit record. We wanted, you know, we wanted to be stars. So whatever made us become stars, we agreed to. So we agreed to, okay, well, if you choose any one of us, any one of us could sing, you know, but it was Diane, and we were happy for that. I mean, there was no reason for us to be unhappy about that because she was one of us, and she was great. We loved her. We loved her voice. Uh, it just became very bad after a while when we realized, well, we're not ever going to be able to sing. What is your relationship today with Diana Ross? Is there a friendship? I feel that uh, Diane and I both uh, right now are searching for our individuality um, because I feel she wants to find out who Diane really is and I want to find out who Mary really is and in order to do that you have to really sort of got to forget the past and and go on and search for yourself. I feel that's where we are. Only um, until we we feel comfortable being who we are today, I think at that time we can come back and be and be friends. But right now there is really no relationship. Heard some things that, uh, quite frankly, I think will shatter a lot of people's image. Who? Of of, <laughs> <laughs> of me? I'll admit it. Oh. Of Diana Ross. Oh, you throughout think so? this book. I let's let's call it. She did not come off as a very nice person. I mean, she was egotistical. She was power hungry. Uh, she she was constantly causing trouble within the group. Uh, she was not exactly a, a a source of great delight for you many times throughout the years of the Supremes. Shall I wait till you're through? <laughs> you know, it's amazing how people 
sort of uh, want me to really dislike Diane or to feel bitter about the way she is, the way she was. I, I shared that story with everyone because I love her. And I love her in spite of herself, because of herself. I think it's possible to know people, and perhaps you guys have someone in your family that you love, but I mean, boy, you just cannot stand and talk to them on it. You know, it's like, wow, why do they have to act like that? But there still is a, a love there. And uh, in my book, I show how, yes, Diane was very aggressive. Uh, she was the kind of girl that, uh, in, the, in the Brewster projects, we'd all be playing around and she'd uh, race with the boys and she would beat them. I mean, she would beat them and I'd just stand back and I'd admire that. I think in our own way, when people become famous, uh, you, you do admire them, but then when you get a chance to look at them as real people, you say, well, shoot, you know, I don't know if I, you know, I don't know, know if I like her, but you do like what they have achieved. And I think because of her, her way, because of her aggressiveness, that's why she made herself into this huge star. You the Motown family. For the Motown family, for they will always, always be in my heart. So when you honor me, you really honor the Motown legacy. And to all the Supremes, all the Supremes, especially Mary Wilson, I want to really, really send my love out to her. I was curious, do you have any contact with Diana Ross at all right now? And did she have any comments on your book? On the book. Um, to be very, very honest with you, right now, there is not a relationship between Diane and I. Uh, there has not been one between the two of us for, for a long time. And I think that had a lot to do with um, sort of the things that happened back in 1967 when Florence left and Diane was moving out front to become a star. Um, we really kind of lost our relationship there. I don't think that we lost the love that we feel for each other. Uh, I do know that very soon I would like to call her up and say, hey girl, you know, what's going on? Let's talk. Can we talk, you know? Mm -hmm. And I'm sure that after we, after the two of us get together and decide that we want to really uh, make this relationship work again, it will happen because I believe once you love someone, you, you never stop loving them. You might start disliking them. But I think the love is sort of always there. Harry, when you first realized uh, about 1965 or so that everything was being geared toward Diane, what was the feeling between you and Florence? Did you feel like leaving then? Maybe? Well, I, I didn't really realize that everything was being geared towards Diane that early. Uh, I realized that, yes, she was becoming out front and that she was a vocal point. Um, it, what it did to Florence and myself, I would say, is we sort of felt like we were uh, being suffocated. Our talents weren't really being used. But because we were getting so many other goodies, uh, we sort of fed on all those emotions. And I think it, it really wasn't a very healthy thing to do. When but by 1967, uh, that really kind of destroyed myself and Florence as well. By 1967? Yeah. Uh, how did all that come about? Was it a relationship? A personal relationship between Barry Gordy and she that started this? Oh no, no. I think I think that personal relationship was secondary to to the career and eventually where Diane and Barry went in their lives. Uh, I think basically it was because Diane is, is a very talented woman, and uh, he just saw that that talent was something to be used um, toward getting to the goals that they eventually um, made it to. Diana Ross, a nice person. I think she's a nice person. I think that her her idea of ambition and, and becoming a star might be a little different than what a lot of us think it should be. She but I, I think she is a nice person, yes. I, mean, I, I couldn't baby. love her if, uh, if she was not a nice person. How much did, um, maybe it was kind of a, a, a two-sided deal here, that <laughs> you were so successful that Barry was involved in you, but also there was a lot of discontent that came out of that because Barry was also involved with Diana. Mm -hmm. So you kind of were on the top of a fence there for a little bit. Well, you know, one day Diane came uh, to the room and she says, I'm going to get him. And so I'm looking around trying to figure he out... He was married at the time, wasn't he? Was he? 
Um, anyway, I. <laughs> yes, he was married at the time. I didn't write. I didn't write that. I didn't write about that in my book. Uh, but uh, so when she said he was, she was going to get him, I looked around to see who she was talking about because you know Marvin Gaye is there, you know, and all these handsome guys. I'm thinking, well, maybe it's one of them guys, which is fine with me. But when she said Barry, it's like, why would she want him? You know, this is an older man, and I'm saying, mm. I was very naive. I didn't know he was, a, you know, he was a boss, and that's that was the thing to do. But uh, eventually, she started she started dating him, and and I, you know, I had to give it to her. You know, because that was um, that was pretty good for a, a young girl to say, I'm going to get him, and she got him. And actually, it helped us tremendously. We were very happy she was dating Barry because now we got what we wanted. You know, if, you, if you're there with Martha and the Vandellas and Marvelous and all these other groups, and it depends on who is in Barry's favor, whoever gets the record released, and you say that one girl is dating him, we got our records released. And so, in the beginning, it was to our favor. From the beginning of the show, you stated that you love Diana, mm -hmm. and I wanted to know, how do you think, you know, as far as the book is going, how do you think Diana going to perceive this book, what's going to come out of I I would want her to really know that I love her very much, and that the same way that when she wanted to go out on her solo career, and it took about two or three years while she was still with the Supremes, I was there and I was supporting her and I didn't really t try to stop her from doing that on the Supreme's time. As a friend, I recognized after I was after I was hurt a little bit and said that we had to break up, I recognized that she had to do what she had to do for herself. I was there for her. I would hope that in her reading my book that she will feel the same way, that this is something I've written about, about us. I did not make it up. This is a story of what, what we were doing at the time. I just wrote down everything that happened. And I hope that she will understand that I, too, you know, must continue my life. And I was a supreme, and I have every right to write the story. And I tried my best not to write it uh, in a bitter manner so that uh, it could just be the story that happened. And I, if she's embarrassed about her life, then maybe that's, you know, that's her situation. But I love her regardless of, of, of things that are in the book. Go ahead. Miss Wilson, when you yes. had Motown with Diana Ross, was there any tension between the two of you on stage? When? Motown. Um, Motown 25. The, Mo Mo, the Motown reunion. Um, to be quite frank with you, in the beginning, no. Um, it was very, we had not spoken to each other. Uh, we were not really sort of prepared to, for this big reunion uh, but in my heart there wasn't and as far as I knew in hers there wasn't but I think Motown put us together for that Motown 25th I don't think the two of us were really prepared for the bigness of it and what it would really mean to us being there on that stage I think maybe something happened with us where it dawned on us you know we were not ready to be back together and we, so we're not we didn't really react in a friendly manner uh, so it's very difficult to say there was no outwardly tension. There wasn't even, I think, anything in our minds or our hearts. But it's just maybe it wasn't right. It wasn't the right time. BC's Jay Shadler last night. Mary Wilson complained that Ross would not even meet with her about reuniting the Supremes. Diane and I should have been there together. Said, "I'm ready to do this. You're ready to do it. Let's do it." Why didn't that happen that way? She did not want to talk first. She wanted to do the business first. The numbers that have been bandied about the reunion are these. 12 to 15 million dollars for Diane. How about 15 to 20 million? 15 to 20 million. Mm -hmm. Of which you were supposed to get what? Two million and then maybe three. That's not enough? That's not enough? What do you mean enough? I don't think enough is a word. I think fair would be more of a the better word. Or deserving. <laughs> Mary Wilson has gone her own way, still performing the music of the Supremes as part of a Motown oldies tour. But she carries with her the bitterness of a professional life, she says, forever changed. Diana, all this must be very painful for you. Actually, it makes me quite sad because I do think that uh, we need to answer some of these things that are really not correct. Well, let's go through some of the... Uh, 
accusations that have been made that Mary Wilson has said. Yes. How do you feel about her accusation that uh, she was offered an insulting amount of money to join you in the tour? She said two to three million dollars. You know, I really didn't want to get into the numbers of the tour. I did not um, negotiate with her. Actually, you did not do the negotiating? No, I did not. I was planning to do my own promotional tour across Europe to promote the new album. And Scott Sanders, who is a wonderful friend of mine, said, wouldn't it be nice to add a Supreme segment to the show? Of which I said, that sounds good. That's a good idea. Let's do more of the music. And I called her on the phone. I said, look, have you heard the gossip? The fans really want a reunion tour. Are you interested in this? From the beginning of the conversation, the first thing she said was, what took you so long to call? And mm -hmm. I'm saying it sort of nicer than she did. Uh, I said, look, I thought maybe you'd be happy about this. I talked to the promoters. The promoters came back saying, yes, they'd love to do it. They made me an offer. They made Cindy an offer and Mary an offer. Was never enough. Barbara, I think Cindy if we... Cindy Birdsong was the other yes, um, yes. member of the original Supremes. Now, I think if we had offered her the moon, she would not have uh, been happy. I doubled their offer so that she could come and do this tour. She didn't have to pay for anything, not a hotel room, not a car, not a gown, not a music arrangement, not a set, nothing. She would, all she needed to do was show up. Diana, Mary Wilson said that she feels that she deserved more because I'm quoting, because of her significance as a founding member of the group. You know what? She was making, I heard her say, a million dollars a year. They gave her, they offered her for 30 shows, double that, and I doubled that. While we are on the subject of money, since Mary Wilson brought it up, she <laughs> said that you are making 15 to 20 million dollars for this tour. Can I wish. Ask you, you wish. I wish. Can we ask you how much you are getting paid? <laughs> no, I can't because... But not that. Most of my uh, money is in percentages. Mm -hmm. If we do well, I do well. So it's not, it's not like that. I want to show you just a little something from last night's interview and then yes. ask you about it. Okay. A little clip. There is a certain thing that, about Diane that has always been the way she is, period, since she was, since I knew her at, at the age of 13. And that would, that would be, she wants everything herself. Have you known all of these years, she talks about since you were 13, that Mary Wilson had this kind of resentment? No, I think the unhappiness came when, when things started not to work that well in her life. She's had a lot of difficulties. I think she's coming from a lot of pain. And a lot of times when you're unhappy, you have to find some place to throw that to you. You, you. you know, she's targeting me. And I see such unhappiness in her, coming out of her. You know, oh. I don't know that I can change that. I don't know that I could really change how she feels inside. I don't think there would be anything that anybody could do to make her happy. Is there anything you could say to her? <sighs> what I'm saying right now, I send her all my love. I can't, you know, do any more. I don't know what I can do. I can sit down and talk to her, but do you think it's going to change her feelings? Well, if it did change If she's it. been harboring this, you know, for 30 years or more, I don't know that I could. Is there anything that you could say tonight? or would want to say tonight that might make it possible for you to work with her? Um, I basically, uh, in my heart, know that um, it would be very hard for me to work with her on stage. I think at a certain point you need, I need to let go because I did try, I've called, I called, I even called at Christmas time saying I got the promoters, they're excited, let's do it. There was no return call. Mm -hmm. When people say, uh, this is Diana Ross and the Supremes, it really isn't the Supremes, what do you say? Well, I think uh, she's been working as Mary Wilson in the Supremes and she's been singing my songs. <laughs> All, you know, and it's not her voice. I mean, I had a solo career for 30 years. I've been singing Supreme songs. I want to go back to something else that was said by Mary Wilson. She said you were all equal until you began um, a love affair with Barry Gordy. Oh. And she said that's the reason that you were made the star, and that you were pushed out in the front. I'm not going to defend that. I, I think the audience knows that that's my voice on all those songs, and it, it had nothing to do with my relationship with Barry. I think he's a wonderful... He gave me an opportunity to shine. Barry believed in me. Barry sponsored me doing Lady Sings the Blues. He probably believed in me more than I believed in myself. Mm -hmm. And I, you know, I just think he's a very special man. Did he, was he the one who thought you should do a solo act? 
Uh, the name was changed to Diana Ross and the Supremes, the same as was changed with Smokey Robinson and the Miracles, uh, Martha Rees and the Vandellas. It was all done in a purpose to build us in a bigger manner, not just a group. The rest of the groups did not become victims, yeah. as I said. Mary's been able to create her life by, you know, this, like she's a victim, like someone's doing things to her. Mary also forgets that I contributed to her life when she was having difficulty. I think she's forgotten all about that. I wish that she would have taken the offer. I couldn't get involved in that. I actually stayed away from it on purpose because I didn't think that I should have been involved but then when it didn't work I offered more and it still wasn't enough I want to talk about this concert I'd rather give my money to the charities <laughs> your recent television special was called the divas now it used to be that to be called a diva Diane <laughs> was not a compliment I mean divas were considered monsters no, no not really, really. Wasn't it prima donnas that were the well, prima donnas? I can, <laughs> does diva describe you? Do you like being called a diva? Yes, I do actually right now. Um, I like the idea that women are able today to take responsibility for their lives and, it, and have the strength of character to say, you know, you know, I, I did this, I want credit for it, or I did this and I need, you know, I'm sorry, or I, I need to be, free. but I think it has to do with giving, it has to do with growth, it has to do with wisdom, it takes a long time to get to be a diva, I mean, you got to work at it. I have to ask you. Yes? Is that your real hair? <laughs> I know what you know in the early days you were just all different you, ways. My, my, you know, it's so much simpler if you can find a way that your hair looks natural. Should I ask you if it's yours, Barbara? It is, as a matter of <laughs> fact. It doesn't look as if Yeah, I think I gotta do a little bit to it. But, yeah. So this is this is a little addition here. This is this is me and it's addition is like, you know, okay. added on, you know, you see? Okay. We've been talking about some difficult things, but Oprah Winfrey has said that when she saw you as a Supreme, it changed her life. She realized that a young black woman could make it. Star Jones has said this to me. That must give you a very good feeling that you have been able yes. to inspire yes, it does. so many. It's, it's, it's so important because that's really what I've always wanted to stand for is good image. And it's about the image, what we did during a time when it was really difficult for white America to accept black music. They called it race music. We were able to bridge a gap there. And it was such an, an amazing time that right now it's really a good idea that we can reclaim our legacy. And I'm proud of what we stood for, very proud of what we stood for. Thank you.